The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has more work yet to do after revealing another leak last month. The National Nuclear Regulator has ordered the operator to look into every possible source of the leak. Tokyo Electric Power Company made a statement in late February. Radioactive water accumulated on the roof of the number two reactor building and then made its way into the nearby sea. The company knew about the situation for months before disclosing the information. TEPCO officials presented plans to prevent a recurrence at a hearing of the Nuclear Regulation Authority. They plan to pump radioactive water from the current drainage channel to another channel leading to the plant's port by early April. They say they will also change the course of the current channel to carry water to the port instead of the open sea by April of next year. The panel ordered the utility to continue investigating whether radioactive water also flowed through other drainage channels. TEPCO officials said there was a delay in reporting the problem because the information was not shared by officials working at the site. We've made a mistake in handling and disclosing the data. Are you sure you do not have any other unshared data at this point? The panel ordered the utility to carefully check whether the officials failed to share any other data. Authorities in Japan want to expand emergency protocol to people living even further away from nuclear plants. They're concerned the guidelines they have in place don't go far enough. Municipalities are required to prepare evacuation plans for people living up to 30 kilometers from the plant, but officials of the Nuclear Regulation Authority have approved draft guidelines that would affect residents outside that zone. They say those people should stay indoors if there's any chance of a large-scale fallout. Experts found radioactive materials traveled further than 30 kilometers from the Fukushima plant after the accident four years ago. Authorities would decide which areas are at risk by checking radioactivity levels at the site of the accident and monitoring weather patterns. They would also measure the amount of contaminants in the air over the surrounding region. And they would lift their emergency order only after their readings show it's safe. Regulators will finalize the guidelines after taking public comments for 30 days. Students in Fukushima are trying to see past the challenges of the present and envision a promising future. Some had their studies interrupted when the earthquake and tsunami triggered the nuclear accident. The prefecture ran five high schools near the Fukushima Daiichi plant, but the massive radioactive fallout forced all of them to close. Classes have continued on a temporary basis elsewhere. Now, this has forced some of the students to live apart from their families. Now, these evacuee students have graduated. NHK World's Ryo Asami shows us what life's been like for them. This is the temporary home of Futaba Shoyo Senior High School. Its original building sits five kilometers from Fukushima Daiichi. But students and teachers have been coming to this university facility 40 kilometers away. 49 children attend classes here, a quarter of the old student body. 17 of them are seniors, including Tatsuya Endo. He's lived nearby for the past few years. My first expectation was that our lives would go back to normal soon, but it was dashed. I was disappointed. Endo calls this service department home. Fukushima Prefecture offers the accommodations to students who live away from their families. It's hard at first. 
I wanted to go back to my hometown when I moved in, but I decided to change my perspective and focus on learning various things from this place. Most of the students need time to adjust, but they soon get used to taking care of themselves, and they meet friends. Takeshi Nakamura has been teaching this group since freshman year. The students don't talk openly about their hardships or about the nuclear accident, but they must have various things to consider after the disaster displaced them from their hometowns. They must have gradually gotten over their concerns. Now, the 17 seniors are preparing for what's next. They graduated on March 1st. Keeping the memories of these past three years in our hearts, we'll look ahead and move on, feeling proud as the graduates of Futaba Shoyo. We could not return to our original school building, but we believe it will be filled with the smiles of future students. These students believe the challenges they faced we only better prepare them for adulthood. I want to be a teacher. If possible, I want to return to my hometown to make children smile. We, the graduates, will face various problems, but each of us will be able to overcome them given what we have been through. Thank you.